Getting a robot to drive is the first most important step for any FTC team. But just making a move isn't enough. You need code that's clean, easy to understand, and reusable. Learning how to structure your drive code properly right from the start is going to save you countless headaches later on in the season. I'm Coach Pratt, and for over a decade, I've taught robotics and design. I've mentored FTC teams to national championships and multiple Inspire Awards. I've seen firsthand how a solid code foundation sets teams up for success. In this video, I'm going to walk you through step-by-step how to create a simple and clean arcade drive class for your robot that's set up in a tank drive orientation. We'll write the code together, I'll explain what every line does, and then we'll plug it into our main op mode to get your robot on the field. Programming a tank drive chassis in Java is pretty straightforward. A tank drive chassis is a robot that has one side controlled by one motor and one side controlled by another motor. The classic example of this is the class robot from Rev. Now, for competitive robotics, I would not suggest that you only use one motor or two motors to power your drivetrain. I highly suggest you use four. Two motors tends to be generally inefficient, and uh, using four is just going to make things go a lot better. So uh, using two motors on one side, two motors on the other side, if you follow through my tutorial to build this tank chassis, we will, both of these motors connect to a single shaft to be able to control each side by chains. But another classic way of doing this, just having one motor power this side, the other motor power this wheel, and this wheel is an idler wheel. So that's another way of doing that. So let's start first by inside our team code, we've got our mechanisms package. I always like to separate my mechanisms in separate in their own separate classes because it makes your code just so much cleaner when it comes time to actually have your main op modes so inside our mechanisms package we're going to make a new class and we're going to call this one the arcade drive class so let's talk a little bit about what arcade drive is now classically you could easily just have this controls the left side of your robot this controls the right side of your robot but that's really rather challenging on a driver to keep track of two individual sides and everything else. So we're instead we're going to use something called arcade drive, which is driving forward and backwards with this one and then turning with this stick. So let's make some code for doing some arcade drive. You may have, this is how typically how you drive things inside a video game. So we need to set up four motors here. We're going to make a private DC, not DC tree, DC motor. And we're going to have front left motor, a back left motor, a front right motor, and a back right motor. Now, this is a nice little trick you can do in, in uh, Java. If you are all making four DC motors, you can just use commas to separate those four individual variables. Then we need to make some sort of initialization method so that our main op mode can initialize this. So we're going to make a public void init, and we're going to put in the hardware map as an argument. I'll go ahead and open that up. And now we need to actually create our four motors inside of this. So we're going to say that our front left motor is equal to a hardware map. Oops, sorry, it is hardware map dot get and we're going to say dc motor dot class they comma and then in strings you have to put in the exact name that you've written inside the configuration file on your robot in my case i have front underscore left underscore motor and then we'll go ahead and repeat this for the other motors as well so we have a back left motor is equal to harbormap.get. Again, dcmotor.class. And in this case, it is the, the back left motor. Okay, so we've got all four of our motors initialized. Now, looking back or on my set, 
both of my motors on the right side are going to spin the same direction because the the axle that connects the two of them that actually outputs on the shaft is in between the two motors. So I actually want both my motors spinning the same direction, both the left and the right side respectively. However, because our mirror, our motors aren't set up on our motor like this, they're actually mirrored with each other. We actually want the right side of our, or the left side respectively, to be in reverse as opposed to going forward. We also need to go ahead and set our modes. So remember, there's four modes that we can set things on DC motors. I like to set our drivetrain as run using encoder as opposed to run to position. Run to position is going to end up having your drive motors out of sync with each other. Whereas if you have them running to encoder, they will try to achieve the same velocity, which is more we want so we can have different powers going to those specific ones with their internal PID controllers. So we're going to go ahead and do our front left motor dot, not set power, set mode. And it's going DC motor dot run mode dot run using encoder. So we're going to do the same thing for all four of our motors. So our front left motor has that. Our back left motor is also going to be set mode with the run using encoder. And then our front right motor dot set mode is also going to be run using encoder. And then our back right motor is also going to be run using encoder. After we set all that up, we want to set the left side up to be reverse. Now, if you find that your robot goes in the wrong direction, you should actually set your right side to be reverse. So let's go with our front left motor dot set direction. In this case, direction is going to be reverse. And our back left motor dot set direction is also going to be in reverse. So with our motors all set up, let's actually go ahead and make our drive method so we can actually make a setter method that's actually going to call all our motors to actually work. So we make a new public void called drive. Now drive is going to accept two arguments. I'm going to select a double called throttle and a double called spin. Now looking at our controller, throttle is going to be the forward and back velocities, either a forward negative or positive or negative. And spin is going to be negative or positive spin here. So in order for arcade drive to work, we need to have a new double called left power. And our left power is equal to our throttle value plus our spin value. Whereas our right power is equal to our throttle minus our spin value. If you want to know how that math actually works, I've got a whole video for that in the description down below. Next, we need to figure out which of these numbers is the largest. So we're going to make a new double called largest. And this is going to be equal to the math.max. So we can find the maximum of these two numbers. And we're going to say math.absolute value of our left power. The same thing as our math.absolute value of our right power. So now we're going to see of these two numbers, which one's largest. And if largest is greater than 1.0, we need to be able to sanitize those inputs. So we need to say that left power is equal to left power divided by largest. And then right power is also equal to right power divided by largest. So why do we have to do this? Well, it's possible that when we sent in our calculations here, that we are actually going to send in a value of two to throttle and spin. That might be a maximum speed forward up to the right. And that means that if we look at our control hub here, if we have maximum speed throttle and maximum speed spin, we're actually sending 2.0 to our throttle there. And in order for that to happen, That would mean that, and then the other power might be less than that. It might be only sending one power to the other because our throttle would be one, our spin would be negative one, which means we'd actually be sending zero to that far right motor. So our throttle in this case would be one and our spin would be negative one. So we'd actually be sending zero as a right power. And because we want to be always kicking up to the right, that would actually be possible that we are sending only 
one full speed to the other. So we want to divide it by one or divide it by whatever the largest value is so that we only end up with a maximum value of one being sent to those motors because otherwise your proportions are going to be a little bit out of whack. And once we have sanitized that down, now we can actually go ahead and make all four of our motors move. So we can say that our front left motor dot set power is going to be equal to left power. Our front right motor dot set power is going to be equal to right power. Our back left motor dot set power is going to be equal to left power. And our back right motor dot set power is going to be equal to right power. So now we've got our drive method set up. Let's actually go ahead and put this into an op mode. So we're going to go inside our team code. We're going to right click, make a new Java class. We're going to call this one arcade drive op mode. Inside this op mode, we're going to extend the op mode class. And our op mode always needs two methods. We need a public void init. And we need a public void start. Or oh, sorry, not start. We need public void loop. So we need to make a new instance of our arcade drive class that we just made. So we're going to say arcade drive called drive. So equal to a new arcade drive. And then we need to initialize the hardware that we put inside that mechanisms folder. So we're going to say that drive.init, we're going to call this one with our hardware map. So that's actually going to initialize all the hardware that's existing on our point. And then our loop is where we're actually going to cause it to drive. So we're going to up here, we're going to make two new doubles. We're going to make a double called throttle and a double called spin. Then we're going to set our throttle. It's not throw new. Our throttle is going to be equal to negative gamepad one dot left stick y. So if you remember that left stick y is actually inverted, and our spin is going to be equal to gamepad one dot left stick x. Then we can simply call our arcade drive with drive dot drive. And then we can call in our throttle and our spin values, respectively. And that's it. That's how you can get an arcade drive set up uh, using a dual motor setup on either side. Hopefully you found that helpful in getting your robot up and moving. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer those for you. Otherwise, best of luck out there this season.